Recently, I've seen many of the otherwise most productive people in the Bitcoin Cash community spending an inordinate amount of time on petty squabbles. I've been thinking a lot about what the causes of such conflicts may be and how they might be prevented in the future. In a recent interview with Amory Sachet, lead developer of Bitcoin ABC, Colin Enstat began with the discussion of the controversy within the Bitcoin Cash community over whether the logo should be orange or green. Amari responded with an explanation of the concept of bike shedding. Basically, the idea is that in any discussion among stakeholders in an organization, the agenda item for which the maximum number of people have the requisite competence to have a valid opinion, such as what material the bike shed should be made of, will be the item that takes up the most time in group discussion. Colin's response was both genuine and perfect. He said, I have no idea about any opcodes, but hey, I know colors, so here we go. This immediately made me think of the run-up to the hash war and the split of BCH and BSV. During that time, Craig Wright railed against two opcodes, opcheck datasig and opcheck datasig verify, that were being added by Bitcoin ABC. The function of these opcodes, that both accomplish the same essential function, is not obvious by their names. Craig Wright railed on a daily basis against these additions, saying that they would make the operation of the chain illegal and facilitate bucket shops, which is a form of unlicensed betting on the price of stocks. His followers picked up his narrative and ran with it. Wright is an inveterate liar, so I dismissed his claims out of hand, but I didn't really investigate OpCheck Datasig until months after the fork had occurred. Opcodes are the basic functions in the Bitcoin programming language, called script, used to lock and unlock coins. A Bitcoin address is actually a representation of a little locking code. The typical address, known as pay to public key hash, is a script consisting of four opcodes and a hash of a public key. You spend your coins by unlocking that script with your public key and signature. This type of verification that a message, in this case the transaction itself, a signature, and a public key are all correlated is an essential use for cryptography. Craig Wright was up in arms about opcheck data sig, but all the opcode does is allow a message other than a transaction to be verified in a script. That's it. It allows a Bitcoin script to use the most basic application of cryptography, something that it couldn't do up until that point. So far, opcheck data sig hasn't produced any bucket shops, but it is a crucial component of virtually all of the most recent innovations in Bitcoin Cash, including enabling offline smart cards and recurring payments. Why was Craig Wright able to get away with misrepresenting something that is not all that hard to understand? Why does the Bitcoin Cash community in general, like Colin, have no idea about opcodes? Why are the people who do have an idea about opcodes uninterested in communicating valuable information in a non-technical way. It's easy for those with technical expertise to dismiss those who want to argue about the color of the bike shed. I've been guilty of this behavior in the past, but it is important to remember that even going to war over a color is a signal that an individual has a desire to play a role in the future of the community and network. If that individual had an idea about opcodes, they would go to war about opcodes. Reasonable, thoughtful, competent members of the community who are pushing for initiatives that help to grow and sustain the networking community suffer the most when the community goes to war over color. As we saw in the run-up to the hash war, those who benefit most from an uninformed community are those who seek to divide and weaken that community. The most toxic, sociopathic, destructive individuals all flocked to Craig Wright's simplistic and deceptive propaganda. Those of us who knew that Craig was technically inept and simply wrong in his analysis ignored him and his bike shed argument, his color war. That was a costly mistake. It was an act of collective elitism on the part of developers. When community members echoed Craig's inane statements instead of patiently simplifying the issue, in a way that could be understood by non-technical individuals. All too often, and I was as guilty of this behavior as anyone, the speaker was shamed for expressing such ideas. 
The result? That individual was added to the toxic mass itching for a split. If there is a notion of developer elitism in Bitcoin Cash, it is because we developers cultivated it through our actions. If there are color wars, it's because we developers dismiss interest by non-developers as mere bike shedding. Bitcoin is not just a software project. In fact, Bitcoin is not even primarily a software project. Bitcoin is a project about human community. Success requires talented people with a wide variety of skills. Great coding alone isn't going to cut it. Not only do conflicts distract the most valuable members of our community from building and growing the network, conflicts over what color to paint the bike shed have shown that they can escalate to actually splitting the network and community. It's happened before, and until we learn from the past, it will happen again. How do we prevent color wars? How can we, as a community, move the discussion to a higher level and involve the maximum number of stakeholders in the decisions that truly matter. Those with technical competence need to make it standard operating procedure that they come down out of their ivory towers and explain, in simple-to-understand terms, what they are doing and why what they are doing matters. The great draw of BSV, and the reason why they were able to attract so much of the community to a set of absurd ideas is that they kept those ideas simple. Set in stone. The real Bitcoin. Bucket shops. Back to Genesis. Massive scale. Metanet. Immutable evidence trail. People who understand Bitcoin at a technical level know that these terms are meaningless. But the terms are simple. They are the material from which bike sheds are made. If all that is being offered on the other side is a technically dense specification for a new opcode combined with an open dismissal for anyone who can't understand that specification, one side is at a distinct advantage in winning the hearts and minds of passionate but non-technical individuals. Almost every concept in Bitcoin can be explained simply. Almost every technical thought leader in Bitcoin could make such explanations. Albert Einstein said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but no simpler. He also said, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Community members who are already passionate about the technology and community are hungry for a better understanding of Bitcoin. That's a very good thing. When that hunger is not met with real sustenance, that is a very bad thing. If developers in our community will not prioritize giving simple explanations for actions, then we have no right to complain when we are drawn into conflicts about what color the Bitcoin Cash logo should be. Bitcoin Cash is only going to be a stable and sustainable network when those community members who are looked to as leaders show respect for the passion of those who may not have as much experience or competence as they themselves have. Either we will spend the time creating and educating the community, or we will spend even more time dealing with conflicts and picking up the pieces when those conflicts escalate into community and network splits. When we actively show appreciation for those who spend their time and energy supporting the network by simplifying and sharing our knowledge, we will release the power of the human spirit toward the productive end of bringing peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash and financial sovereignty to the entire world.